Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our series on chest pain. This is the first lecture of a series of presentations in which we will discuss each and every aspect of chest pain. Chest pain is one of the most common reasons that people seek medical care. And the term chest pain is used by patients and applied by clinicians to describe the many unpleasant or uncomfortable sensations in the anterior chest that prompt concern for a cardiac problem. Let's move on to our lecture. What is chest pain? The most important step is to differentiate between acute and stable chest pain. Chest pain should be considered acute when it is new onset or involves a change in pattern, intensity or duration compared with previous episodes in a patient with recurrent symptoms. On the other hand, chest pain should be considered stable when symptoms are chronic and associated with consistent precipitants such as exertion or emotional stress. What is chest discomfort? Although the term chest pain is used in clinical practice, but patients may report pressure, tightness, squeezing, heaviness, or burning. In this regard, a more appropriate term is chest discomfort because patients may not use the descriptor pain. They may also report a location other than the chest, including the shoulder, arm, neck, back, upper abdomen, or jaw. Features more likely to be associated with ischemia have been described as typical versus atypical. Do not use the term uh, atypical chest pain. Instead, define the pain as cardiac, possible cardiac, and non-cardiac. Chest pain has been traditionally stratified into typical and atypical types. Chest pain that is more likely associated with ischemia consists of substernal chest discomfort provoked by exertion or emotional stress and relieved by rest or nitroglycerin. The more classic the chest discomfort is based on quality, location, radiation, and provoking and relieving factors. The more likely it is to be of cardiac ischemic origin. Atypical chest pain is a problematic term. Although it was intended to indicate angina without typical chest symptoms, it is more often used to state that the symptoms is non-cardiac in origin. As such, it is discouraged to use uh, the term of atypical chest pain. Emphasis is more constructively placed on specific aspects of symptoms that suggest their origin in terms of probable ischemia. Chest pain is broadly defined to also include referred pain in the shoulders, arms, jaw, neck, and up upper abdomen. To diminish ambiguity, the guidelines recommend to use cardiac, possible cardiac, and non-cardiac terms to describe the suspected cause of chest pain. This is the outline of today's presentation. We will discuss the nature of chest pain, the onset and duration of chest pain, what is the location and where the chest pain radiates to, what is the severity of chest pain, the various precipitating factors, the relieving factors and associated symptoms with regards to ischemic versus non-ischemic etiologies of chest pain. So let's move on to discuss these terms one by one. When we talk about na the nature of the chest pain, these are the features associated with angina and these are anginal chest pain is perceived as retrosternal chest discomfort or pain, discomfort, heaviness, tightness, pressure, constriction and squeezing. On the other hand, if a patient has pericarditis, they may perceive sharp chest pain that increase with inspiration and lying down supine. The second characteristic of chest pain is the onset and duration. Anginal chest pain and other anginal symptoms gradually build in intensity over a few minutes. On the other hand, acute aortic syndrome. However, if there is sudden onset of ripping chest pain with radiation to the upper or lower back, this is unlikely to be anginal and it is suspicious of an acute aortic syndrome. So any patient who present with sudden onset ripping chest pain that is radiating to the back, acute aortic syndrome should be suspected. Fleeting chest pain on the other hand, that is a pain of few seconds duration, is unlikely related to ischemic heart disease. Location and radiation. Pain that can be localized to a very limited area 
or that radiates to below the umbilicus or hip is less likely to be or unlikely to be of ischemic origin. As far as severity of the chest pain is concerned, we already discussed that any patient with wrapping chest pain that is sudden in onset and associated with particularly in patients with hypertension, bicuspid aortic valve or non-aortic dilatation, acute aortic syndromes should be suspected and these are acute aortic dissection, dissecting hematoma or penetrating atherosclerotic ulcers. Precipitating factors that are most likely consistent with anginal symptoms are physical exertion and emotional stress. Occurrence at rest or with minimal exertion associated with anginal symptom can be and indicate acute coronary syndromes, NSTEMI, unstable angina, and acute myocardial infarction. Positional chest pain is usually non-ischemic. For example, this could be musculoskeletal. So these are the precipitating factors. In general, symptoms are <clears throat> precipitated by physical exertion and emotional stress. Uh, if the in general symptoms occurs occur at rest or with minimal exertion, the patient may have developed acute coronary syndromes, for example, acute myocardial infarction or unstable angina. And positional chest pain points to a musculoskeletal etiology of chest pain. Relieving factors. Uh, it should be remembered that relief with nitroglycerin is not necessarily diagnostic for myocardial ischemia and should not be used as a diagnostic criteria. Finally, coming to associated symptoms. Symptoms associated with myocardial ischemia are dyspnea, that is difficulty in breathing, palpitations, diaphoresis or excessive sweating, lightheadedness, presyncope, syncope, upper abdominal pain, heartburn unrelated to meals and nausea and vomiting. Atypical chest discomfort uh, can occur in elderly patients, in patients with diabetes and in women. Uh, for example, they can have left or right sided chest pain instead of central chest pain or retrosternal chest discomfort. Their pain can be stabbing instead of uh, the classical tightness, squeezing or pressure symptoms or they can have a sharp pain or discomfort in the throat or abdomen. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for your attention and uh, I hope that uh, by following these steps and by assessing the patient as outlined in this presentation, you can accurately differentiate ischemic causes of chest pain from those of non-ischemic uh, causes of chest pain and you can save a patient's life and can save a patient from unnecessary investigations. Follow these steps in your clinical practice and definitely it will help you and your patients. Thank you so much.